CataractCoach.com, refractive lens exchange pearls. So here are the keys to success for these refractive lens exchange patients. Now, the first concept is what is the patient's preoperative refractive issue? Certainly you're not going to do surgery on a 25-year-old who's plain old refractive error and a tremendous amount of accommodation. So there are a couple groups of patients in which you have to be extra careful. Number one, the plano presbyopes. 55-year-old person, for example, sharp 20-20 distance vision without glasses, and just needs glass to see up close. The challenge you're going to have there is our presbyopic solutions may not give the image quality that the patient desires. If you're going to do something here, you may want to not touch the plano dominant eye, leave that for distance, and then do a procedure, either LASIK, perhaps an IOL, for the non-dominant eye to dial in some near vision. Examples like this case, this is using an extended depth of focus lens and aiming for a little bit of a myopic target in order to give some reading vision. The second group of patients where you have to be very careful are the low myopes. You ever had that patient who's a low myope, but also a presbyope, a 50 year old who's minus two and says, listen, my near vision's great. Just fix my distance vision with laser. Well, you and I both know that's not possible to fix presbyopia and give the patient the same vision that they're used to. So in those situations, you want to be very careful. Now, what are the refractive patients that have a beautiful outcome with RLE? Those tend to be the ones who start off hyperopic. If the patient's hyperopic to begin with, let's say a plus two or three or even plus four or five for distance vision, and then they've got readers on top of that because they're presbyopic, those patients are going to be very appreciative. Even then, keep in mind, there is a little bit of an image quality loss when we put in lenses that are going to split or spread the light. Think of it this way. The light energy if you, that goes in the eye, if you focus all those photons on one range, like distance vision, image quality is really good. And that's what the patient is doing now. And just the patient using glasses to shift that focus to near vision, etc., if you get that same amount of light energy and you give most of it for distance vision and then some of it for the intermediate range, like an EDOF or extended depth of focus lens, that's still pretty good image quality, but it's a little bit less than a monofocal, especially at night when the light energy is limited. And finally, think of a trifocal lens. The total amount of incoming light energy is still the same, but now you're splitting up into three ranges, approximately equal for distance and then equal for intermediate equal for near. And so again, in situations where there's less than abundant light, such as dim lighting or nighttime vision, there's going to be some sort of compromise. In addition, those diffracted rings will cause the patient to see rings around lights at night, the haloing effect. So you can certainly do the surgery still those patients. The key is to set reasonable expectations. Now, another important concept you've seen here in this video is to do a meticulous surgery. Notice how at the beginning of the case, I got the nucleus up out of the capsule bag. You cannot risk a ruptured capsule or damaged lens uh, capsule in a patient who's paying for refractive lens exchange. You really have to be able to deliver a beautiful incision, a predictable refractive outcome, a beautiful capsular excess, and get that lens beautifully centered in the visual axis. So again, in the case shown here, this is a patient who's getting a refractive lens exchange in the non-dominant eye and aiming for a little bit of mild myopia and using an extended depth of focus lens in order to give a reasonable range for that intermediate vision. So this patient is, in essence, opting for monovision. This patient is probably mid to late 50s and a plano presbyope, so sharp distance vision. We're not touching the dominant eye, which we're leaving since it sees 20-20 distance great. It just has no reasonable near vision. Now, this non-dominant eye with the extended depth of focus lens, we're going to be able to dial in a reasonable amount of near vision. Now, keep in mind, what's the range here? This patient wants to, be see, wants to be able to see the computer screen and maybe the cell phone screen and do some reading at a normal distance of, let's say, 40 centimeters away from the face. And that's a, somewhere in the range of, let's say, 16 inches or so. And that's reasonable. And so for that, for this lens, the EDOF lens gives about one and a half diopters of range um, and or depth of focus, maybe aiming for a post-op refractive result of minus 75, minus one, would give a very nice wide range of vision for the near zone for this patient. 
And so as a result, this patient would then have monovision. The right eye is plano with a human crystalline lens, and then the left eye is about minus one with an EDOF lens like this, and then the patient's able to read pretty well and is pretty happy. You see the end of the case here, look at that centration. You can see the rings or the, the central zone, I'd rather, of that EDOF is beautifully centered in the Purkinje images. We put some triamcinolol inside the eye to help quell inflammation. We also put some moxifloxin. The patient has a little bit of astigmatism in the cornea. We're gonna address that with just a very small limbal relaxed incision. And that's the end of the case. So a lot of consideration to keep in mind when you do cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange surgery, more precisely, for these patients with refractive errors.